Hi guys and welcome back to another redstone tutorial. Now in today's tutorial what we're going to be doing is having a look at this redstone screen behind me. So this is a very very compact screen and it's very very fast and I believe it's a brand new design and I'm very excited about this. I spent quite a lot of time trying to make this and yeah it's just generally quite exciting. So what we're going to be doing is have a look how it works and what different aspects of it allow it to work. Going to be having a look at how you can build your own one and what blocks you'll need to build that, and then finally how you can scale it up and stack it to make a much bigger screen, such as the one behind me. 16 by 9 screen is the one behind me. We're not going to be looking at one that big, but probably just adding an extra layer to this one below me. So, very exciting, and at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about future plans for videos, what we're going to be doing. So, without further ado, let's get started and have a look at this screen. So this is the screen ladies and gentlemen and it is pretty compact and fairly fast, well in fact very fast. It uses NOR gates here, it uses an RS NOR latch here, it uses comparators and four pistons and four blocks to put the image onto the screen. Along with a reset function which is reasonably fast, it's not the fastest bit about the screen. But you can reset it in about, what, I guess 10 ticks for this 5x5 screen. That's pretty fast. So let's start off with have a look at the inputs. Now, here we've got a 5x5 five five screen, which means we have 5x coordinates, 5y five coordinates, and a reset button. So we're going to be going through this. The 5x coordinates, they control the, basically the pixels from side to side, like this, horizontal pixels. The y coordinates control the vertical pixels. So when you combine these, it pinpoints the pixel and writes it using the RS null latch into the piston display. So at the moment this one isn't wired up. So let's go have a look at one what is wired up. Now the only bit which isn't wired up here is the Y coordinates and I'll quickly do that to show you. So now we've got a vertical decoder. Now I'll be doing a tutorial on these in the future as well. Got a bigger version over there which I'll show at the end of the video. But this just allows you to select some Y coordinate at the moment. Now we've got one too many and that is because we're going to be building a row of pixels on top of here for later. But for now let's have a look what we've got here. So as you can see at the moment a few pixels are indented. So what we need to do, oh, didn't mean to press that button. We need to turn off all these redstone torches at the back. That'll just turn off those so they're not gonna keep resetting the screen with the new pixels. So this is a good point to demonstrate how the reset works. So you push this lever and it's got a bunch of torch towers and it will extend all the pistons back out. So that's just an example of this. So here we've got some RS NOR latches and we'll come back to those actually. Let's start with this over here. We've got a bunch of NOR gates and we've got the Y input, we've got the X input. So first of all let's just select row 1 in binary, that is 1 in binary so it should select this row here. So you see it's turned on the redstone torch and actually that needs to be inverted. There we go and it's been inverted using repeaters rather than the torches. So you can see we've selected line 1 which is turn this redstone off subsequently turning this redstone line off here. Now what that means is that we've selected Y row 1. We can select Y row 2, but at the moment we've got no Y row 3. So we've selected Y row 1. This is turn off this redstone. And you think because this redstone is off, these torches will turn back on. But no, they're being powered by, uh, behind by the X coordinates. So this is where the NOR gate comes into being quite useful. This, These torches will only turn on if both the Y input and the X, sorry, the Y input and the X input are both on. That is the only time when the torches will turn on. That means that we can draw here. So we turn on this one and this one, for example, you'll be able to see that the those two torches have turned on at the bottom. Now to mention the RS NOR latches. So we've got these NOR gates and they are currently on for the pixels we've selected. So the we can put as many X coordinates as we want in, but only one Y at a time, unless you don't use that system with the decoders. So we've selected these two pixels, and what we're wanting it to do are write these two pixels. So as you can see, if we go to the front, they have written those two pixels. That will happen very, very quickly. But how this works is that we've got RS null latches. Now, what will happen here, if we just grab, let's say, grab that one as well. I think we could have done that the other way around, actually. Let's grab that one. So this one here has got an item in. So that allows us to have a comparator output from it, like so. I you see the comparator is turned on if we just grab a redstone lamp like so. We need one more block in between those, like so. 
we've just got that one on at the moment because that is where the item is however if we put another one facing the other way that hasn't got an item in so there's no comparator output so what's happening with this um, pixel display when we select a pixel what's happening we're pressing a redstone torch and it's moving the item from this dropper into this dropper because they're facing into each other and this is interchangeable this basically allows us to select different displays like this well it allows us to select different pixels and then keep that pixel as on so that's what's happening over here the items are generally always in this dropper here and that's how you reset them they'll all go into this dropper and then when this torch turns on the item from this dropper will move into the other dropper which is then detected by the comparator as you can see below which then because it's on unpowers the redstone torches which retracts the piston so we'll be having but we'll be building one of these in a minute and i'll explain it a bit better but that is basically how it works the item moves from one drop to the other which then either turns the pixel on or turns the pixel off now how it resets is we've got these torch towers in between they just need to be going on every, every other one we've got one there and one there and currently this torch is off but if we turn this on down below like this you'll see that this torch turns on which is next to the droppers which if there's any item in this dropper it would move to this one here because the torch is on and you just turn it off and it would completely reset the screen so that's how that works it's pretty cool and I guess we'll move on with building a one so let's head over here so to build a one individual pixel what you will need is eight redstones redstone clay or any block of your choice five of another any block of your choice will need four pieces of redstone two levers two pieces of glowstone that's meant to be two we're going to need one comparator two droppers one repeater five redstone torches although it would be less if you end up stacking this and four sticky pistons now i would bring an excess of all these items because so you don't know how many you'll need but this is how many i've got here for this design so let's pop these into our inventory we'll leave the sticky pistons there for in a bit so what we're going to be doing when we start off and what we want to do is invert the signal what we put in so we just need a redstone torch we'll only need to do this once because we end up stacking this glowstone higher and higher it just keeps going higher but for one individual pixel we just need these two pieces here so we'll get rid of those pieces i'm going to put redstone on top of both those and if you were stacking it higher you'd put redstone on top of these two like so which i'll show in a little bit so we've got these two pieces of glowstone with two pieces of redstone then what we want to do is make kind of a c sort of shape and you want to put redstone on all of these bar the top one so we've got this sort of configuration there we want to put a redstone torch here and if you wanted to make this stackable you'd put a redstone block here and a piece of redstone there so to move on what we're going to do now is we want those two droppers facing into each other so we've got one there and one over here Oh, we want to face them into each other, not like that, but want to be like that. <laughs> I can't believe I just broke that. There we go. And we want to get rid of these blocks. Now, to measure the signal, what we want to have a look at is building the comparator. And this is just a display which is commonly used just to extend pistons. So we want uh, two torches there and block there and a repeater there. And finally, we want these blocks here want to place them all facing forwards like this now after done we should have used all the blocks what I said at the beginning although in creative mode so we won't have used them but there we go and finally we just want to put one block in here like so as the RS null latch that is one pixel completed so let's explain it actually we do need one more block out here just to remember that that is the Y coordinate that's an important part of it we'll now need our redstone torch and finally I'll leave it there. So we've got our X coordinate and our Y coordinate. So the Y coordinate turns off this top redstone here. And we've got our X coordinate which turns on and off this redstone here. Now the reason why this block is here is because those two pieces would join usually. But when you're stacking it, it's fine because basically what happens is you just carry on design one higher up like so. Which I'll show in a minute. And you just build it all one higher like this, like this and so on I'll just leave that there for in future so as you can see we turn this one off it's going to turn all the redstone wires off so we just want to select this one pixel turn that off but currently the torch is still powered by the Y coordinate so you can see at the moment we've got this stone in here which is the RS null latch but if we put this Y coordinate on you'll see if we watch the pistons they're going to retract 
Dush. There we go. So the item that wasn't here has now moved into here, which powers the comparator, which unpowers the torches, which unpowers the repeater, which retracts the pistons. So that's how it works. Let's build one right above it, just to show you how you can stack it. I guess I'll put this in a bit of a time lapse so you can watch it a little bit faster. So meet you back in a little bit. So very simple, that is two of the pixels, one on top of each other. So now we'll just build one out to the side. So you come out with two blocks like this, there's no need for that redstone torch now because we've got the line here. We wanna, we'll just do it on both of these. Put redstone above like so. Wanna put a redstone torch there. We want to put a block there. And we also wanna put a block there. The only thing we missed out on the screen is to the resetting of it. So, currently, all these torches are off. But when the items move over here, we need a way to move the items from this hopper back into its original state over here. So what we do, we want to come up here, we want to put a block here, block here, redstone torch on both, then redstone, I mean a block underneath both of those, we want to put a redstone torch on the other side there, effectively making a torch tower like so we want to make sure these torches here are off otherwise if they're on it will be constantly resetting so we'll move it i think that should be okay actually we'll put just a lever there you can do whatever you want with that you can move it down two more blocks just as long as the these next to them are off so as you can see if we press this you can reset the screen and all the pixels should come out there we go that is how you can scale up the screen and make it a lot bigger and I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I guess we're going to wrap it up here after showing you this big screen actually. So yep, yeah, that's how you can make this very, very compact screen. And I guess now I'm going to do a little bit of a talk through of my future videos. But if you're just watching to see how a screen is made, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned how you can make a pretty cool Minecraft redstone screen. So let's move on to what I'm going to be doing in the future on this channel. And yep, yeah, let's move on with that. So before I wrap up the episode, as I said, I've got a few plans for future videos, what I thought I'd just let you know, because there is quite a lot of the videos I'd like to make in the not too distant future. So the first one is the GPU. Now this is not compact, this is just me deciding on what functions the GPU should have, and this should be very, very compact when I actually go to make it, and do a tutorial on it, and I imagine it will probably use a similar sort of system to the screen with the NOR gates up along the side, that would be very good. So yep, I'll be doing a tutorial on a GPU, I'll also be probably doing a tutorial on the CPU and a compact version of an ALU, so that should be very, very cool when it comes up in the future. And another one is a hard drive, and this is a very, very, very fast and compact hard drive, I believe probably the fastest hard drive so far, possibly. And again, it uses a similar concept to the screen with the NOR gates, just to locate each individual bit on the hard drive and write data to it. Another one is, um, these possibly have done, been done before because they're quite simple redstone. But these are vertical decoders. Again, they're very, very fast and allow you to vertically decode binary into decimal. So they're pretty awesome. So I'll be doing a tutorial on those as well. And then if we go to the map making side of things, I'm currently working on the concept art for Star Wars map. And that will be finished off in the not too distant future. I've also had a subscriber suggestion, so thank you very much for that, and that is to make the Lowly Mountain from The Hobbit. So currently, I'm working on the map for that, and I just want to get the terrain really awesome. I'm thinking about using a software called World Machine alongside World Painter to make that map, which should make it look fairly realistic. So I'm waiting on that at the moment, trying to make a cool map, so that's going to come in the future. So look forward to that. And then finally, the other thing with World Painter and World Machine and making maps, is that I'm going to try and make a map for something called Hermit Quest. Now, if you've ever seen people like um, Exuma Void, Iskal, and a few other YouTubers, quite a lot of YouTubers, in fact, I'm not going to mention them all because it's a big, big group, but I was thinking about making a map for Hermit um, Quest and showing Iskal and see if we wanted to use it in a future one of those. So I'll probably do a video on the making of a Hermit Quest map, possibly in the future. 
that's what I'm currently working on. So as I said, I hope you really enjoyed this video and hope you've learned a bit from making this screen and you can make it in your redstone worlds and all sorts like that. So thank you for watching. I hope this has really helped out. And I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone. So as I said, let's move on. So this mess of redstone is the XOR gate. Now what the XOR gate does is basically only let a signal through if either the 